Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman on Monday inaugurated the Income Tax Department's National E-Assessment Centre, which will reduce face-to-face -face interaction between taxpayers and tax officials. The setting up of the NEAC is a step for better taxpayer service reduction of taxpayer grievances in line with the Prime Minister's vision of digital India and promotion of ease of doing business the Finance Ministry said in a statement. It added that under the new system, taxpayers will receive notices on their registered emails as well as on registered accounts on the official web portal. They will also receive real-time alerts by way of SMS on their registered mobile number, specifying the issues for which their cases have been selected for scrutiny. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse the e-assessment scheme 2019. Joining me on the programme today are Dr. P. Pulla Rao, tax expert and economist, Abhishek Rajaram, member Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and Ajay Dua, former Secretary, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Dua, let me begin the program with you. What changes now that we have the e-assessment scheme in place? Hitherto, Frank, we've seen e-filing of tax returns, something which had over time become very popular. I understand that on 31st July, which was the last day for filing the tax returns for people whose accounts didn't have to be audited and who were, the, as many as about 5 million people filed their returns on that day and during that 5 day period, about 15 million people had. So people have accepted e-filing, this no longer necessary that they should be preparing it in time, then their CA or they will post it or they will go and deposit it at a particular place. I think this is taking it to the next stage and in a, with a qualitative change. Hitherto, it was as I said e-filing but there was still interaction, interface between the tax officer, the tax official and the tax assessee and you were subjected to the vagaries of his moods, vagaries of his workload and vagaries of his attitude. Is he somebody who is overloaded by the revenue target imposed upon him by the department? Then he could even go for an overreach and we used to see that overreach or he could by attitude itself think that making money is wrong. So somebody who has lots of money or who has and he may have made it absolutely legitimately Tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is not that he has found ways and means to avoid paying taxes. Hence, attack him and that's I will call overzealous. Courts have come down heavily upon overzealous and the finance minister herself in her speech a few days ago talked about overreach saying we have given fairly modest targets. The realistic targets is the word she used and there is no need for tax people to be over, overreaching. I think this is a step in that direction, in addition to getting all the advantages of uh, moving to a digital economy, of promptness, uh, a service which will help individuals, businesses get prompter refunds, hopefully, and also, as you said, why their cases have been delayed, the refunds have been delayed and I'm sure going forward the government will further refine it and say that within one month your, your return uh, probably you'll get an answer. Within three months you'll get your refund. All those so people can better plan their cash flows and I think a, a, a step absolutely in the right direction. All right. Abhishek Rajara, uh, what is the process of assessment under this scheme? If you can take it through, uh, take us through that. Yes, sir. Sir, in this... Uh there would be certain new units created. As you said that uh, Madam has inaugurated NEAC, that is National E-Assessment Centre. And there would be Regional E-Assessment Centre. There would be Assessment Unit. There would be Verification Unit, a Technical Unit and a Review Unit. Now, how this whole uh, gamut will work and what these units would do. First, there would be a communication from the National E-Assessment Centre, NEAC which we will uh, take it as like this in short form. So, NEAC would act as a coordinator between the taxpayer and within these all certain units which I named. 
सो फर्स्ट दे विल सर्व अ नोटिस टू द एस एस सी एंड देन एस एस सी विल गेट फिफ्टीन डेज टू रिप्लाई टू दैट नोटिस वेदर ही एक्सेप्ट द नोटिस और मीन्स दे विल बी कम्युनिकेटिंग विच यू सेट दैट दे वुड बी ऑन एस एम एस एंड ई मेल सो दे वुड बी कम्युनिकेटिंग वाई योर केस हैज बीन सिलेक्टेड वॉट रिक्वायरमेंट डू डिपार्टमेंट वॉन्ट्स फ्रॉम यू एंड देन विद दिस all the replies would be submitted online by the uh, assessee now how this will work now after his reply they would be uh, transferring the case to the assessment unit au and then au would be conducting all sort of uh, question answers which they will uh, they will up, they will update to the national eac and any eac will communicate to the assessee so basically assessing unit and the depart and the assessee they don't have a direct interaction so uh, there would be no lightning sort of thing which will move towards transparency hmm. of this whole of the work now when they will receive a reply from or submissions from the assessee now they will uh, forward it to assessing unit assessing unit will pass a, will make a draft assessment order and that assessment order will be sent to nec there would be a review unit which will review the assessment order and then after that they might enhance modify that assessment order and then a final order would be uh, sent to the assessee now in between that there would be a technical unit also hmm. if uh, if uh, the unit assessing unit feels that this is something which uh, uh, which requires a technical help or the question here is very complicated so they might take help of a technical unit also but again they would request this to nec and nec will allot them a technical unit now we are moving from what sir has said was sir has said that the uh, individual person has a mood but mood swings also but in this case there would be a unit which will have so many people with them and no one will know who is the assessing authority or who is passing my order right. it is a faceless assessment so sure. no one more thing hmm. uh, after this uh, uh, order is passed it is communicated to assessee then he will get time to uh, pay the taxes after the order is passed the whole of the thing would be transferred to the jurisdiction officer now if he want to file appeal against this order so, so he will file appeal with the concerned jurisdiction or officer so assessing unit and any is your role would be for doing a uh, uh, for conducting assessment where no one knew who has conducted this audit or who has conducted this modification so on the on the face of the order there would be no name of the person no name of his designation no disclosure regarding that now in this whole work if in two cases if somebody requires a personal hearing then he can request a personal hearing but that personal hearing will be held through video conferencing and that nec will uh, manage how the video conferencing will work but in no case the person the assc will never come to know who has done my assessment so everything will be go on merits does okay. the does the beauty of this thing and which will help us and hmm. last after passing the order now there will be a different penalty proceeding which will be done by the assessing officer regarding his case what is the penalty to be initiated whether penalty has to be levied on the assessee or not <coughs> so this is going to help reduce time with a greater transparency and this is wonderful thing which this government has proposed it was up to e assessment was somewhat working with uh, past 2 3 years where you were uh, you were re required to file only e replies mm. but in the, but in one case uh, there would be no e assessment for the cases where there are for someone who is not having a pen right so we'll come to so, that in just a bit we'll come to that in a little okay. later in the program like who's exempt from this but before that i'd like to bring in dr pullar out dr pullar would you agree with the assessment made that you know that this could put an end to red tapeism and the other problems that are associated with income tax yes highly welcome that government particularly this government has recognized that there is corruption through interfacing of people there was harassment and it was endless and we needed transparency 
Transparency can come only when there is no people-to-people -people contact. While Mr. Rajaram has given the whole process how it works on paper, how is it going to work in reality? There is a fear that when we are totally faceless, you know, we are not able to convey the nuances of our account source. How? How did I come to this? Now, what he has explained, I submit, I got a notice. I am submitting something. They say no. And then the matter is closed. I can't even argue. Therefore, I would like in all of this situation, which is very welcome, we need it, government has recognized it, government has taken a bold stance that we need a reform. And reform is always have, has some dangers, that it may be glitches may be there, it may not work well. So that is what I fear for small people, say who have suddenly a capital gains issue. They sold a house, they got two crores, they levy something, they say this is again, say there's a dispute. What happens? Then you know the whole thing involves getting higher technical chartered accountants. The biggest beneficiaries of this will be chartered accountants. Because I can't go and interface myself in this electronic thing. I'll be meeting faceless people. Therefore, reform is very welcome. This is highly necessary. This will reduce a lot of corruption. You know, in my cases where they're high-powered chartered accountants, but ordinary people may have a problem. And to that extent, we should have some kind of more humane review process. As he has mentioned, now the order has been levied. I am penalized 25 lakhs. Now who do I go to? Then I have to pay it immediately. The machine tells me you pay and then you appeal. So I believe a more human touch at some level is necessary for smaller people. We have not reached that stage where our taxes are being levied in such a way that we understand it. We have a long distance to go. Therefore, I personally feel that maybe we should make haste slowly. Right. Make haste slowly. Find out how it's going to work in one state is extending it all over the country at one go, there are certain problems. Like, don't forget the GST is a wonderfully successful tax reform. But how do you introduce it? That's my only worry in this regard. Sure. And, right. and therefore, I personally feel that in all the process, what has been explained, it's all technical, it's all machine. It, I don't think so, you know. I have seen other countries also who are levying this. There has to be some human intervention at some source. And you have to trust bureaucrats to some level. Not all of them can be put on that thing. You have to have reduce their discretion, but have them available. Otherwise, there'll be lots of problems like in GST. Right. And I wouldn't want that to happen on such a fine reform as this, where the objective is to have honesty, reduce transparency, and bullying by the revenue service. Mr. So, Dr. Pullarao has a point there. You know, there's a reason why people like to bank with the nationalized banks and not with Citibank at some level, because they miss that human touch. How do we get around this particular problem? I think uh, I heard, if I heard Mr. Rajaram right, he had mentioned while he was explaining the process from the documents which he had, is carrying, that there is a provision seeking an interface, seeking uh, an explanation avenue from the even under this scheme of things from the national you file an application but saying, that's at a later stage no no not the you can do it earlier also right if you have a point of view which you think cannot be uploaded or the there's no provision for providing it in a digital form then you could explain your case even before it gets taken in under scrutiny or under appeal and you would be talking probably to uh, three robots because you wouldn't know who you are talking to but you are being heard and it's a video conference i think care to that extent has probably been taken the very right apprehensions with uh, with he which he had that's number one second any movement towards digitize digitalization any movement towards computerization, we've always faced this issue. Whether it was railway ticketing, uh, computerization. Allegations are there, the tickets get sold, somebody from the back office is selling the tickets. But the fact of the matter is, there is, if we have 90% improvement, 10% still remains to be attended to, I would think that the measure is well worth going for. While over time you you kind of handle the ten percent issues of grievances or any 
a thing arising because you are dealing with a computer. But allow me to just give a, a one illustration. The railways came in with reservation in 1980s. I remember once standing in a queue myself in Mumbai because I was coming on a personal trip to Delhi so I, for my ticket. So I, and I have a habit of start talking to people in the queue before or after me. So I could understand this person is a professional buyer of tickets or so. The person who was there, I asked him now, how will you handle your, how will you do your business? He said, nahi sab machine ko bhi khilana padega. <laughs> so this is the apprehension kind of a thing. But the thing can be, I think, well worth it is trying. And I would think that there are far more gains than the losses which are being apprehended. Sure. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Abhishek Rajaram, you're talking about uh, the exceptions really under this particular scheme. If you could take us through that. Yes, there are some exceptions. First is uh, where someone doesn't have a pen. So, in that cases, a jurisdiction officer will do. Or in cases where paper return has been filed and the assessor doesn't have an email ID. Maybe he has not opted for email ID something. Then, which you will find a very rare chances. Third, where uh, uh, audits are already going on or there is a scrutiny or a raid case. One more case. In cases where department doesn't have a good connectivity, where a limited connectivity. So for smaller towns or smaller cities, which I feel uh, smaller towns, they would be limited connectivity. So they are saying where there is a limited connectivity, we will come up with the exceptions. And the date for exception is 31st March 2020. We will come with the exceptions where we will not going to do this uh, e-assessment. So they have taken care of each and everything. Now, uh, what I would like to reply to, sir, uh, that he was talking about um, the human uh, touch. Human touch hmm. and uh, in human interference. So, so current, the currently, if you don't indulge technology into your business, you will be removed. So, a day or later, maybe we may take two years, three years, but it will come. So, it is better to start earlier because today uh, you do for, as Sir Dwasar said, for e-ticketing. Now, we are dependent on the com computers, apps. For, real, for mo movie tickets, we do through apps. Swiggy, Zomato, we are dependent on apps. That's a technology. For Caps, Ola, Uber, everything is, is moving towards technology. And eventually, most of the returns which are filed on uh, in for income tax also, it is filed through e-mode. So, I don't feel there is a hardship for replying to a notice. And when you are saying that uh, it's for a very uh, a person who doesn't have an income, uh, he will get certain notices. So, so, it doesn't happen if someone doesn't have an income source less than 5 lakhs, so it is free of course. Right. So, so they are not charged towards income tax also. So, so getting a notice for a very who is having a limited income will never be a case. Exception if he has a house property and maybe having a capital gain on that. Right. Okay. Yes, Mr. Sudha, you want to add something? Uh, all that I want to say is that while we are moving towards digitization and e-assessment is much more than probably just e-filing, we would need to create capacity in our systems, computer systems and others, which must be ready to face what is called a surge in assessments, filing. As I mentioned, I think, right in the beginning, if about 5 million returns are to be filed on one day, the time is much longer available, but we all have a habit of doing it on the last day. Last day. So, similarly, and 15 million in the last five days, and out of the total applications of 57, 57 million returns, 76 million roughly taxpayers in the country, 57 million returns, of which 15 million filed in the last five days. Five days. So the capacities which have to be created have to be huge, not dividing it by 365 days, saying 75 million people will file next year. So, let's divide it, create that much. This was a major problem we all faced when the GST system was brought in because the, the backup network system took very long to be created to match that. And there was a high degree of criticism because there were not only payment, but there were monthly returns also to be filed. Right. That's number one point, I would say. 
Number two, I think the acceptance by the income tax officials who probably the ones who are the middle level who've been trained so far in going through the digit to the physical process and that find fault with everything so that it goes because after all e assessment as was very rightly explained is also backed up by an assessment unit a technical unit and then the a third set of units there are human beings doing it they must not be looking for faults per se so that it moves to the next stage when some when people will come and have to explain it to them and that will require in the new persons change or reorient change in their attitude at the time of training right when they go to the national academy in nagpur for income tax persons sure. that you are moving from an earlier era to a new one and a reorientation in all the commissioner level people who are the middle level people in the scheme of things seeing how what you are so either to used to that seeing a queue of people waiting outside and you be giving given importance when you go to a social event because they are all assessees or potential assessees that now it's going to be anonymous way of working in that department it requires a major you know identity loss for them sure. but they would all need to be reoriented on that right yes dr pullar so i was just uh, you know coming to everything that mr dhuva said they must not find fault how will you want to stop that you know he says as human nature is to find fault which they will continue to do so and they will continue how do you prevent them from being very very lavish in finding fault it's not no more they are no more responsible the paper has come i take the safe route and say yes this is has to be examined this has to be examined and they take the safe route so that they show well we are levied more tax what is the system available to prevent precisely what he has said the actions of human nature and also the reason to curry favor and also to avoid being saying you're soft so that is something i don't know to what extent when you have this machine doing the job how you can ensure that this doesn't continue because the ssc is helpless so four set of people or five set of people who are involved the technical unit assessment unit the judicial unit somebody is going to find fault hmm. with the other guy below him to say that he is better at his job and it is nitpicking without responsibility the fact that now you have to come forward is the government should introduce one more unit which will highlight those people who are deliberately creating problems for the ssc are they being overzealous how do you identify whether a person is being overzealous or over smart to harass people so there i am very very worried to that extent technically i am sure the system is very strong ideologically ideally this is a good system but without the human touch and watching how these people are operating the machines are doing i believe there will be a certain amount of victims also but that government must prevent by making sure that just because you are pointing out false you are not being a good officer just because you are showing a red ink on the paper doesn't mean you have done your job well that factor i don't know whether it is already there or not but that has to be introduced or there will be kind of recklessness in this also right. so that is a point of worry sure okay closing comments uh, from both my guests uh, mr dua has uh, uh, left us for the time being and is uh, his his headed elsewhere but i'm going to get closing comments from both my guests i needed one clarification you know something that you can probably explain a little better abhishek is you know what kind of scrutiny cases are likely to come under e assessment for that a detailed guideline will come it's not here right now i would like to uh, add some more thing what sir has said the assessment will not be done by a machine you machine it will done by human beings only and there would be two units one would be verification unit which will be cross examining all the documents and the second unit will be assessment unit which would be doing actual assessment and then there would be a review unit which will be actually reviewing whether you have uh, with whether you have over jealous what sir has said they are not over jealous so that check and balance mechanism has already been uh, put in forward so there is a uh, cr for cross examination there is a verification unit for uh, uh, for assessment assessment unit and there is a review unit 
and a technical unit will only help when there is a technical problem or if assessing officer finds if he is unable to understand then he will not mark it to say now i am enhancing your test no no no, no. he will mark the case to the technical unit that's and regarding the servers so it would be it would not be so robust server that that would not be required because uh, at the end of the day replies will be limited to the people who no notice has been issued none other person is going to do it so that is uh, bringing everything on record so then uh, human there is no human intervention but that's not absolutely true you can request for the video conferencing you can go and explain them right so i want to explain i uh, just by saying that, that i have submitted this will not work and you can write anything in n, n number of papers you can write 200 pages uh, reply you can submit 2000 pages reply but then in current scenario what we have heard of there are certain um, people saying that uh, uh, papers are changed or assessing officer demanded something that, that's why that, that's why the government has been working on that also they have been asking senior irs to uh, resign also Right. So, government is seeking best step towards in the better for the country. Right. So, there are checks and balances really yes. and we are looking at everything from a holistic point of view is what you are suggesting. All right. Closing comment from you, Dr. Pularao, on the best way forward then. What is the best way forward? It is not about technology. You can't fight technology. You need technology. Technology will reduce this, you know, uh, cor corruption to some level. But I also feel that in the system where you have millions of taxpayers in India, that you has to be very careful. What Mr. Rajaram has said is that it's a perfect system, that everything is there, it is going to function, which I slightly disagree with him. I want safeguards. Whether I give a 200 page appeal or a 2 page appeal, I want to know it's being heard, not just being shunted aside. How do I know it's not being shunted aside? I have to go through the judicial process. I have to suffer all of that. At some stage, when the customer, when the taxpayer says, I want to be heard by somebody, they should give that facility. If I want to be heard, so that I get the satisfaction that I am being heard. They should give that facility. It should not be reduced to that anonymous numbers of, you know, service providers, whereby they just, you know, your uh, complaint has been noted goodbye. I wish our government would introduce that angle so that people, at least in the beginning, one or two years, will be satisfied with the system. Right. Okay. All right. Then on that note, we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.